Hi, I'm Mark Gibbs with The Great Outdoors. And first off, I want to say happy fall to everybody. Hopefully it's fall in your area. We're finally feeling it here in Austin, Texas. And we want to go over wildflower overseeding. This is the perfect time to get it going. You can start even a fraction earlier if you want to start toward the end of September, mid-September, that's fine. We want to have about six weeks before a frost is going to set in. On our average early frost, it keeps getting bumped back, but this year it's around December 16th. So uh, if you can get your guys germinated and have them getting a little established before those frosts set in, you'll be a little bit more successful. So starting earlier is, is not gonna hurt, but we still have plenty of a window right now. Um, the cool thing with wildflowers, they've come a long way. Used to be you could only put them in sun areas. They really do need full sun. And if you've also noticed when you're out there driving around, a lot of times the slopes look better than the flatlands in, in many cases. Part of that is drainage. So you wanna take that clue from Mother Nature. If you've got some areas that are gonna be holding too much moisture or too damp, you need to go ahead and get some aeration there or do something to improve the runoff uh, because the, the seedlings during frost and freeze time just won't make it through if they're too wet and they get that damage. So do consider that. And then there is a great little blend out there that you can do for shady areas. So I wanna point that out for folks who don't have an option. Um, the big thing is you need soil exposure and we're gonna take a look in a minute on this shade friendly package and be showing you, you need to get at least an inch of depth prepared. Uh, and by that, you know, you don't necessarily need to till, you just need a good metal rake with some deep tongs on it. And I'll show you, we wanna try to rake in two patterns. So we get some sort of furrows going on so that seed will land somewhere and bind up and it won't just be sitting on that surface and wash away very easy. But there is a shade blend for folks who are captured in the shade. The other fun thing you can do with wildflowers, or you can do them in containers. You just have to be ready again uh, because that root system on those plants would be exposed to frost situations. So if we're gonna have a duration freeze, which is you know under 32 for a long, long spell, week or so, then you wanna protect that root system also, not just the plant, since that root system is gonna be exposed. If you have a larger container, it's gonna take a lot longer for that soil surface to freeze, but you wanna boost them a little bit there and try to keep, be sensitive to that root system not being deep enough at, at, at that such a young age. You can get blue bonnets in starts. Um, something I like to show folks on the packaging here. Um, usually there's a recipe on all the bags. It's gonna tell you what's in the blend specifically. And uh, the nat native wild seed, the wild seed from uh, Wild Seed Farms, they'll give you sort of percentages on how much is in the package percentage wise. On smaller packaging that's a mixed blend, if you start at the top of the recipe and work your way down, uh, the first plant, there's gonna be more seeds of that. And then as you go further down the list, fewer in the batch, fewer in the batch, fewer in the batch. So like reading a recipe at, on a can of something at the store. Um, so just be aware when you're looking at different blends, you may see that starting palette uh, may change up a little bit depending on what you're looking for. You may wanna look for that at the beginning or if it doesn't matter and it's somewhere in the blend and you're happy, that's fine. The other thing with wildflowers are that once you get germination and your bouquet starts in the spring, another great thing you can do with Mother Nature is take the clue from Mother Nature and take some pictures of your entire cycle while it's blooming all through the spring and into the summer. Then you'll be able to isolate in those pictures. You'll be able to learn some of the names of those flowers if you don't already know them and use those pictures to sort of focus in on maybe what the happiest bouquets were in your area. That's Mother Nature again, kind of giving you a little bit of a handhold to say these guys are really happy here. If you didn't have success with some of the other parts of the recipe, then you can focus in on our single packs and go back with the single pack of whatever varieties did best. So you're really creating a heavier bouquet of the plants that are happier in your area. So we do have the single packs. If you wanna go with a monochromatic look, you can get these single packs and just do one stand of crazy, crazy awesome color in a wildflower and have a beautiful blanket. The other trick with wildflowers are that uh, a, a very large palette of them are perennial. So you're not just gonna have that plant giving you seeds for another generation, but that plant's gonna live from generation to generation. Coneflower, for instance, is 
a biennial, so mama lives two years, but she's gonna have seeds, she's gonna produce a few pups. When she goes away, her seeds and her pups will be the, the next two year cycles for you. So on some of these guys, you're not just gonna get that bouquet one time, you're gonna have that mama seeding for many, many years. Uh, the skeleton leaf, uh, the black eyed Susans, which come in a lot of different flavors. Um, and then the Coreopsis, there are certain Coreopsis that will go perennial here. So um, once you see these plants and you start recognizing that leaf, you'll also know when it comes time to mow uh, areas you may want to avoid because you don't want to chop down those perennials or areas where you need to raise your blades so you still have some foliage left, but you are dispersing the seed when you go to, to mow. And that's the other you know, important thing I'm going to tuck in here at the end. You've got to really, it's not the prettiest um, exposure when you've got all those dried flowers out there. But just remember the payoff you had while they were in flower. So let those seed heads go fully dry and let that seed disperse. Um, it's really cool on blue bonnets. If you've ever tried to get a blue bonnet, one of the little uh, pods, uh, they'll begin to twist and they'll get to a certain point in their twist where they'll literally just explode. And that seed can disperse, you know, three feet, four feet. It flies really far from mama. So it's kind of fun when you go out there and you collect them because you can literally use them like little grenades on each other uh, to spread your seed. It's really neat when you get them at that mature of a peak. Um, so do get familiar with those seed heads and when they're drying so you'll know the proper time to mow again. Um, it's a patience thing because People tend to want to get out there too early and then you actually lose some of your population. And then the other thing with mowing are again, if you've got some of these perennials out there, you want to, you want to be tender on that mowing. You don't want to be scalping. You don't want to be taking it back to just dirt. You want to try to leave some of that foliage there for those perennials that are going to want to kick through and give you some more cycle on their span of bloom. So we're going to head over to the shade area in a minute. Oh, I forgot to mention the pigeon berry. That's in a couple of the the packets here on the mixed blends. This is a great, great little uh, perennial ground cover. Uh, I've seen them actually make little miniature bushes when they haven't frozen in further south parts of, uh, of Texas. Uh, but it's a beautiful foliar color, great flower cycle, and then a gorgeous color to the berry when those guys set. So sometimes you're not just getting flower, but you're getting the, the hips or what it produces before it goes to seed. So definitely take a look at some of these varieties. If you want to start with mature plants or plants that are already rooted, that's a fine situation as well. You want to get them in the ground as soon as possible because we want those roots to have some time to adjust before we do get to freeze time. So if you have any questions on these guys, please come in and ask us. We'd be glad to show you where the seed packs are and help you pick anything you want to find. Okay, so we've snuck over to our shade area and we're going to pick back up on the wildflower selection. This is a selection for shade and on each of the packaging it's going to tell you uh, you know the basic square footage for the size of package that, that it is and they give you a very wide range. This one the range is 500 to 700 square feet for how much is in the package. I just tell people they always ask why is there such a variation? Well it really just depends on how dense you want it to be when it comes up. So a recommendation we suggest is if you want it to be fairly sparse, so you get as much seed out over a broad, broad area, go ahead and add some sand to the, the blend. That's going to give you some weight when you're dispersing it and you won't just go a couple of feet and all of a sudden be out of seed. Uh, it's about the equal amount of sand to the size of package that you have. Should give you enough balance to get your square footage covered without being too, too sparse. So when you see a wide range in this, it just means some people have a very small area. It's going to be really, really dense. The thing you have to watch out there is that when it comes to water and sunlight, uh, you may be watering surprisingly later on in the spring uh, because there's so much competition. And same thing with bouquet. Uh, the bouquets may struggle a fraction uh, because they're competing for the light and for the water. So just, you know, try to, try to disperse them as, as broadly as possible uh, just for the results that you're going to get. Um, so on this blend, uh, about one gram is going to do this little baby area right here. And as you can see, I'm just going to use this hand tool. That's plenty of depth right there, okay? The seeds don't need to be covered uh, completely. Uh, you know, a lot of times, again, 
we end up burying the seeds too deep and they'll actually rot before they get a chance to germinate. So uh, the main thing here is I do want to make sure that it's, it's loose at least this far down. And I mentioned earlier in the previous segment, we want to try to turn over the soil, the soil in two directions so that we know we've broken up some of the clods. And then we know we've got some furrows where these teeth have grabbed down there. So that when that seed starts to settle, it'll have a little bit of a wedge to catch it. So I've got that nice and fluffed up down to that one inch. And again, I'm just gonna come through here lightly give myself some small furrows and a gram for me is about a handful everybody has a different size fist so the other thing too is when you scatter the seed as you saw I went back and forth this way and then I'm gonna come back and forth this way that way, again, we're not getting this banding that you'll see if you're going out and broadcasting. That's why the sand also helps. It'll keep you from banding that when you're putting that out. And if you go two directions, that'll really, really prevent it. If you want to do four directions, that's even better. And I'm going to do a fraction a little bit more to finish off this top side. And now, literally, all I'm going to do is just turn it back over with that seed in there just a fraction just scraping that surface as you can see this is not perfectly clean it's not all nice and pretty it doesn't have to be this is what would happen in mother nature and then I'm going to give this a, a light light watering I'm not going to come in here and flood this we've had so much rain that we don't need to but we just want that new turned over soil and that seed to sort of sit down and hold hands together, give it a chance to bind up while it's germinating. But now we know we've got a good inch, a nice inch, if not two inches of depth. So when that seed germinates, that root has somewhere to go. It's really important that that has a home to get to. And the earlier it can get there, the better off it's going to be when it freezes. You don't have to mulch when you get these guys out. Uh, it's better, again, if there's uh, just natural debris that's going to build up, that's fine. Uh, but think about those roadsides. They're not doing a lot of maintenance out there. They're getting that seed turned over. They're getting the soil exposed, the seed in, and then going with Mother Nature watering it from then on. So use that sand in there to disperse it if you're doing larger areas. Look for those blends that are going to be, you know, maybe recommended for your area. We do have a Texas blend. We have a Texas-Oklahoma blend. We have the confetti blend, they just expand, and then we have all the single packs. And please, if you have any questions, just let us know. The other beautiful thing about most of these wildflowers is they make great cut bouquets. So please, enjoy going out there with the kids, finding some great bouquets, putting them together, and be hands-on with learning those names, learning where they did good, and then seeing what the payoff is the next time they come back around. If you have any questions, please let us know. We'd be glad to help.